Round fight somebody one. and win. That means that somebody else is inconvenienced to varying degrees. That means that whoever you killed, they gotta go back to square one now. It's great for you, stinks for them. The nature of the DayZ Beast. Just like every other multiplayer game, for every kill one player has, another player must have a death. That's the way it goes. In the economy of kills, there are no instances of multiple beneficiaries. There's a winner and there's a loser, and one trade is on the other. However, unlike games such as Battlefield Call. Victory! Round two. So let's let him. Round three. <laughs>
Call of Duty, Quake, Doom, uh, Dirty Bomb, all that stuff, you are not constantly practicing. You are not constantly shooting at a target moving in front of you. You are not constantly getting used to a gun. You're not constantly getting uh, acclimated to a weapon system or a caliber. You can go hours and hours and hours between fights, depending on what you do in game, depending on how you play things out. The more that you do something, obviously the better you get at it. However, in DayZ, the amount of actual shooting that you do can be extremely minimal. DayZ is a game where the gun that you're always carrying around never matters until that one point at the end, where all of a sudden its importance is the most paramount thing in the entire game. It's kind of strange in a way. The thing that perhaps needs to be practiced the most is one of the things in the game that's executed the least. Why am I such a good sniper in Battlefield or Dirty Bomb, but I suck at sniping in DayZ because rarely am I ever in a position in DayZ where I am sniping at other players. So I'm not used to it. I don't get used to it. I don't. Get, I don't understand the bullet drop. I don't understand the bullet travel speed. They're getting different rounds, different wow. rifles, different scope, blah blah blah. It's a different game, and it's an animal that I do not get to familiarize myself with often. But how does this all relate to why I'm telling you now why killing noobs, specifically at the coast, with your weapons, is the best, most effective, and the kindest? Way for you to practice your gunplay. Well, it's as I said. For every kill, there has to be a death. And in this circumstance, knowing where spawns are in Day Z, you do have some level Victory. of control and some level of selection over the targets that you're going to be fighting. For instance, you've been watching this firefight here at the Northwest Airfield. When you go to the Northwest two. Airfield, you can logically expect that most people there will be fairly highly geared and will be, will be dangerous. Round three. Nostra. 
Victory! that they will look like this and they will have these kinds of weapons 
you can plan for that. You can expect it based on the loot that spawns around the area and the fact they have to travel a long ways in order to get here. Similarly, you can expect that at the coast, for the most part, players will not be nearly as geared and not nearly as dangerous. So, when players aren't as dangerous when you fight them, your life expectancy obviously has a tendency to increase. This is also my first VSS, by the way, so two days ago. Two days ago, my first VSS, right? Now. Thanks, Whiskey Tango, wherever you are. AK-74 Master Race. But you're probably listening to what I've said now, and you're saying, well, you're being a coward. You're being cowardly. Well, in a sense, maybe you're right. But really, that depends on who you're calling the coward. Obviously, you're going to have to take my word at this, because there's no way to prove it. But I can assure you from the bottom of my heart that the only reason I go to Electro and Cherno and the places in between and why I frequent spawn areas is not because I'm afraid of losing my gear. The best fights I have in this game take place by these tents at the Northwest Airfield right here. This was a harrowing battle. My, my chest was pounding. It was hard for me to aim straight. My adrenaline was rushing through my blood so much. These are the fights that this is the ideal Daisy fight two deadly players against one another. But these fights here can be few and far between. Depends on the server, depends on where you go, depends on what you do. There's obviously an amount of risk to everything and you want to mitigate the risk as much as possible. Again, this is not Dirty Bomb or Call of Duty or Battlefield. If you lose, you've got a long ass way to fall, especially if you're at this level of gear. Daisy balance and Battlefield balance are not the same kind of balance. Daisy balance and Call of Duty balance are not the same. So I can understand why a lot of people do this only out of cowardice. To those people, I would say shame on you. But I understand, but shame on you. That's not, however, the primary reason why I'm explaining my premise to you. As I said before, the higher you climb, the further you have to fall. So let me just ask you this bluntly. If your primary objective in day Z is to kill people as honorary, honorably as possible or to kill other players with the intention to not inconvenience them the most or to impact them the least as a player then why would you go to the Northwest Airfield and kill people? Those are the players who have the most loose if they lose the fight to you. If your objective, if your primary objective is to mitigate the amount of quote unquote personal suffering, end quote, of a player when they die by you, why would you ever be the first? Why would you go out seeking, if that's your prime directive, why would you go out seeking the players who have the most to lose? Again, if that is your primary concern. Let's say you go and knock off some noob who just spawned into the game. What have they lost? They've lost nothing but 30 seconds of their life. They have been just very slightly inconvenienced. If you had to pick a time, right? And don't try and fool yourself by giving me any answer other than the one I know you need to give. Because we all know it's true. But if you had to pick one time during your character's life when you had to get shot and die, wouldn't you want it to be in the first few seconds of you spawning in when you have nothing to lose? 30 seconds later and you're literally where you were. You are literally at the point of your character's daisy career development. And you can just do it over again. You've lost nothing. You've just been inconvenienced. Yes, I did just hit that guy in the face. He's just bleeding. I mean, look at that shit. What the fuck? How is your face not gone? Those gas masks are not bulletproof. Nah, whatever. Point is, the optimal time to kill somebody if you want to inflict the least amount of damage to their psyche is to just kill them once they spawn or kill them right after they've spawned. You want to kill people who are as 
as little geared as possible so that they are inconvenienced the least by their death. And this is assuming you give a shit about other players, which, quite frankly, I don't. Jeez. Fuck that, man. That's... I just you don't care about your day. A lot of people do, but I'm not. I'm not one of those people. I don't care about your enjoyment that you get from this game. The same way I'm not come. I, the same way I don't care about someone else's enjoyment that they get from Battlefield or Call of Duty or Dirty Bomb. All right, I'm in this for me. I'm in this for me and the people I play with. I don't care about how much you enjoy or don't enjoy getting shot by my bullet. I don't care. It's not because I hate you personally or I dislike you on some personal level. I just don't care about how you feel. You're not a real person. You're pixels in a video game, and you can't actually feel that. And let's let's step away from that for just a moment, all right? Let's step away from the idea that you're inconveniencing them the least, and you're taking away the least amount of work and effort by shooting them once they spawn. Let's also remember, just from a purely, I don't know if it's completely objective, but the point of view of a person who wants to get in as much practice as possible with weapons in DayZ. If you stay at the coast, if you shoot noobs, doesn't matter what guns you have, you're going to see more people where people spawn. Go to Electro, go to Cherno, and all the spaces in between. You will get a lot more practice with guns than you will even on a fully populated server at the Northwest Air Because a lot of the people, they go there, they gear up, and they fuck right off. They don't stick around. Alright, people spawn at the nor- oh, sorry, people spawn at Electro, they spawn at Cherno, that's where people are, you're gonna see a lot of people there. They don't have to travel a long way to get there, they don't have to waste all this time and all this effort getting geared up. They know they could go there, they could fight, and it's low stakes game, because if you die, you spawn close to yourself anyway, and you don't lose much. It's not like I die and I've lost a lot. Oh no, my magnum with 20 shots. Oh no. It's not like I went to the Northwest Airfield and found a helicopter after 10 hours and came back here, tripped on a rock and suffered cardiac arrest simultaneously, and there goes my VSS. Plus, since the most deadly weapons are not going to be at the coast, then the fights will normally be longer because of the less deadly weaponry involved. So you will have, a lot of the times, more, more shots on target. You will have more time actually spent in the fire. And as I watch this clip again, I'm just shocked at how much punishment this guy is able to live through. It's a 380 pistol round. You're not throwing sod and turf at the man. You are shooting him with pistol bullets. But whatever. That's something for him to iron out later. Let's do a summary. Because I know a lot of you are super butt hurt right now. A lot of you are angry and you're upset and you can't get over the idea that someone else is trying to justify the fact they kill noobs. Somebody else is explaining why they do a thing that they do and they actually have a reason for it. A lot of you have breaking. already decided that, oh, this rags faggot you lost goes around shooting at defenseless little noobs as if there's such a thing as a defenseless noob. As if someone who has nothing to lose won't act like they have nothing to lose. Hell, this guy you're watching right now, I don't shoot at, he's the guy in the previous clip that I had to have a fight with because he tried to come back and kill me. You don't let people live in the Z.59. You delay the fight you're going to eventually have with them. That's how it is. Deal with it. It's nothing personal. I just don't want to be shot by you. It's a PvP game right now. This is not your sister's wedding. This is day Z. Nobody cares if I ruin your good time. Pray them is friendly enough. They're smiling and waving. They don't seem evil. Maybe it's just a ploy because they're that fucking evil. Maybe they're slow. They need to pretend to be friendly so you get closer and they can eat your knees.
But I think what's really going on here is that we have extra credits draw this picture and imply to us that it's not actually good that the developer told us something that isn't true, which isn't the fault of moral essentialism in writing, it's the fault of the developer not being talented. And that's a totally different discussion. The next image has the player declaring, I'll decide that if they're evil or not. And the developer is obviously annoyed and the gooey boys are very happy to know that they're not being called evil. Now, generally in video games, if the developer wants to tell a player something, it's either done in an in-universe or an out-of-universe context, like in a meta sense. The Star Wars title crawl is a good example of an out-of-universe. The, the director, the creator, is speaking directly to the audience to establish, without any sense of ambiguity, that these are the facts of this fictional world. It establishes things as they are so that we can proceed. It's not subtle, but it's very easy to distinguish from the in-universe event. In this cartoon, I know it seems minor, but it is something that they created for the purpose of attempting to bolster their point, so I'm kind of going to harp on it a little bit. The personification here of this delivery system of information being that all of the GUI boys are intrinsically evil is the developer herself which implies to me that this is the developer directly through a title crawl similar way speaking to the player saying that they are evil. This isn't an in-universe uh, account that was given to the player by some other character who simply believes this to be true. And again, that's another thing entirely. We see that all the time in media where a character believes something to be true, reports that thing as factual, and it turns out eh, maybe they were misinformed or flat out wrong. This cartoon doesn't seem to be portraying that. This cartoon implies that the developer either has the intention or is directly telling the player that these gooey boys are evil. And if they're wrong, th how can you be wrong? You're, you're the developer, you made the game. Every attribute about these creatures is completely up to your discretion. You decide what they are. You are, in essence, the god of this internal, fictitious cosmos. If there is a discrepancy between something that you show to the players and something that you have declared to be true in the world, that's bad writing and you need to work on that. This cartoon would be much more accurate and helpful to your point if instead of having the developer herself in a meta-representation giving information to the in-universe characters, or the players, you instead had a similar in-universe person simply reporting what they believe to be true, or trying to trick the player. Then the player would be able to make the choice as to whether or not to believe that person, or investigate, and there you have your moral choice. Bam. Nice and easy. Making this delivery of information out of universe really, really muddles the water. It breaks the trust between the player and the developer, which is not something that you want. This doesn't mean the developer has to give the player all the information that there is. It means that you just don't want to lie to the players, because then when you tell the player something that's supposed to be taken true, well, maybe the player will be hesitant to believe you, because you're a liar. And in turn, if a group of orcs, for instance, doesn't even have a choice about their actions, are they actually evil? Well, um, that depends on what you mean when you say evil. I'm gonna assume when you say evil, you just mean really bad. If the orcs aren't choosing to be evil, it's just something that they are, it's intrinsic to their nature to be evil, then sure, I won't morally condemn them for it, because they're not making any kind of decision, they couldn't be any other way, but I'm still going to go out and kill them. Perhaps in your story, you can even have the players you feel so some made. kind of sympathy and pity for these creatures that they have you to exterminate, so because easy. these creatures are beyond saving. It's impossible to turn these intrinsically evil creatures good. Because look, if a person, say, destroys a house, we call that evil because they chose to do so. What? Destroying a house? What a, what a bizarre example that you have chosen out of all of the examples in the universe and throughout history that you could have fabricated to give an example of someone being evil because of their choices. You chose, you, you chose something that has no moral component to it. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bet that most houses are destroyed by people who choose to destroy houses because it's just demolition work, and there's nothing immoral about it. You could have pulled up, like, murder, rape, torture, slavery, all kinds of stuff, but you chose destroying a house as your example. 
But if a tornado destroys a house, well, I mean, is wind evil? Uh, no, but this is like the orc thing you, you brought up earlier. I'm not gonna say that the tornado is evil. It, it's not even an agent. It, it doesn't even make decisions at all. And just like the orc thing, I'm still gonna do what I can to stop tornadoes, if, that, if that's a thing. If, if there was a, a weather machine that I could use to stop tornadoes from happening, then yeah, I would, I would kill quote unquote tornadoes. And I'm still gonna run away you from tornadoes or take seat. shelter from tornadoes. And I'm from Arkansas. I know all about that tornado life. I love my teammates, you no. know? Therefore, if a game's world building chooses to program every member of a species to destroy, aren't they in more like the tornado? Uh, in one way, sure. However, from a gameplay perspective, the challenges that they would present to the player would be radically different from one another. And so the solutions that the players would have to come up with as well. That doesn't mean that it's bad game design, and it doesn't mean that it's bad writing. You still have to tell us why that's the case. Disaster movies aren't inherently badly written because the main antagonist is a force of nature. Same goes with games about zombies. Now if the player's characters are able to make moral choices, but an entire class of NPCs is inherently evil regardless of their choice, then the game is either telling the player that moral choices don't matter, or it's simply driving a wedge between the player's morality and... You captured Zone A. Go heal, Valk. I wish you were good at something other than beating revenge. I wasn't feeding revenge, retard! But you move the fuck away from the bot!
That's a fucking loser right there. Holy fucking shit. No, you're not playing the way I want you to. You're not babysitting me. No, stop, please. I need help every five seconds. You can't. I can't fight by myself. I need you. Fuck you. I'm fu fuck him. I am. I'm coming back. Thanks for feeding revenge, Zon. That was really cool. Fucking prick. Suck a dick. <laughs> 